So if you have your Bibles, won't you turn with me <clears throat> to Mark chapter 16, and we're going to be reading out of verse 1. And as you're turning there, um, we're, we, as we're celebrating this, this glorious day, we think about the fact that he is no longer in the tomb and that he is risen. Our King of King and Lord of Lord has risen, and he, and he is our King. We're going to start at verse 1, and here's what it says. It says, now when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, brought spices that they might come and anoint him. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away, for it was very large. And entering the tomb, they saw a young man clothed in a long white robe, sitting on the right side. And they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him as he said to you. So they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. And they said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. Now, I want you to think about this story. Think about the fact that these, these ladies and all the disciples and all who saw Jesus, who was crucified, they saw him and, and, and they saw him die. They saw his hands be nailed to the cross. They saw him, his feet be nailed to the cross. They saw the spear go into his side. And they, they saw him be brought down from that cross and they heard him say, it is finished. And he died. And so sleep deprived after three days, they had to wait for the Sabbath to pass. And, and they had to wait. And as they wa were waiting, they, they seemingly enough, as full of defeat, full of depression, full of, of just, uh, just despair and disillusionment. And they, they're thinking, what, what's the next thing to do? We just know what to do. And that is, that is to, to anoint Jesus' body. That's what they did. They anointed, you know, take spices to go anoint his body. And, and all of that. Some of you right now may be watching and know what it's like to walk in de defeat. Know what it's like to, to have your hopes uh, deferred and have your hopes uh, vanish. Here's what I'm thinking about as well. This is the same Jesus that they saw hanging on that cross is the same Jesus that was standing at the mouth of the tomb with, <clears throat> with Lazarus and said, and said, hey, Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came out of that tomb. This is the same Jesus that they saw with the young lad who brought, brought five loaves of bread and two fish, and they, they multiply, multiplied it and gave it out uh, and fed 5,000 and, and, and plus women and children. It's the same Jesus that they crucified, that they saw stand up to the scribes and the Pharisees and, and, and the Sadducees and say, hey, what render unto Caesars what's Caesars and render unto God what's God. It's the same Jesus that when he asked, who do men say that I am? And, and Peter, Simon, stand up and says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, hey, you know what? Flesh and blood had not revealed this to you, but I'm changing your name. It's now going to be Peter. And upon this rock, I'm going to build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against the same Jesus. And now all of their hope is gone. They feel like it's all of it's gone. They've seen it just vanish. But it's the same. It doesn't make sense. So why is he dead? Why? There's so much confusion, so much, so many questions and, and some of them not even, not even answered. And the truth is, is, this is what I love about the story is the ladies went on. Uh, they continued, they went and did what they knew to do. And on their way, the question arises among them, who is going to roll away the stone? Who's going to do it? Who's gonna, who's, we know that the stone was large. There's a seal on the tomb. Who's going to roll it away? And wh what I love about it is that didn't stop them. It didn't stop them from rolling that stone away. And they kept on going. Matter of fact, some of you know what it's like. Some of you are facing some stones right now in your life. They're stones of rejection. They're stones of, of fear. Stones of, of addiction and bondage that you, that you may be facing even right now in your life. And, you, and as much as you've tried to roll and push that stone away, some of it's stone that's blocking you from walking in everything that God has for you. 
And then all of a sudden, uh, you try to pull on it, you try to push on it, you prayed about it, and the stone is still there. Because you can, as you can attest to, the stone is very large. But that doesn't stop you. You keep putting one foot after the other and after the other to keep going. And here we are. And so the truth is, is that <clears throat> you can't move that stone away. And Paul says, I'm just going to keep on going. I press on toward the goal of a higher calling. What is that calling? He says, Jesus, that I may know him. And here's what he said. And the power of his resurrection to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. That's what Paul said. I'm going to keep on going. That didn't stop those ladies. It's not going to be able to stop us. But you know what it's like. You pushed on that stone and try to do everything you can to remove it, but you cannot on your own. When I was a children's pastor, I was, uh, was excited because somebody one, one year uh, donated some money for our playground that you see out back. And uh, I was excited about it, and I was in charge of building it and getting it together. So I laid out the plans and find, tried to find out where all the holes were supposed to be dug, and I began to dig. And I began to dig and pickaxe and, and everything to try to get those holes dug. And the last two holes I was not able to get because there was a, just a big rock that was there. And, and I, as much as I tried, I, I was digging around it. I had a sledgehammer, and I was, trying to, I was trying to knock it out. I was trying to do everything. I pickaxed everything I could, and I just could not move that stone. No matter how hard I tried, there, ain't enough, there wasn't enough spinach in the world to eat to try to move that stone. There wasn't enough anything to me to, that I could eat or do whatever to try to get that stone gone. And, and I, was, I was just, I, was like a, I felt like a failure. I'm thinking about it. I'm going to have to go back to little Sammy and little, and little Ann and tell him. And they're going to be like, where's the playground? And, and I'm, I'm going to be like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. So I was just depleted. And lo and behold, I had some friends that came and with a jackhammer, and we were able to jackhammer that rock and break it in half and get that stone out of there. And I'm telling you what, it's a glorious day. Nobody saw it, but I was, I was the one that was hanging on the monkey bars first because the stone had been rolled away and removed. Some of you, joy needs to come in your life because you're realizing that the stone has been rolled away in your life. You can't do it on your own, but God has done it. And so the same stone that's been blocking you, the same stone that's been keeping you from God's very best, the same stone that has kept you from moving forward, God has, has rolled this stone away. And so that's, that's what's happened here. As they came to the tomb, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. Hallelujah that the stone is rolled away. He's alive forevermore. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords, and he reigns forevermore. And that he stands with victory, and we get to stand in the place of victory. We're talking about the one who is the King of kings and the the Lord of Lords. He is the bright and morning star. He is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. I'm talking about when God raised Jesus from the dead, all power and all dominion and all of the keys of death, hell, and the grave were in his hand. He defeated death, hell, and the grave. And here's the question, O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? Because our God has conquered death, hell, and the grave, and he reigns forevermore. Aren't you glad about that? I'm excited about that because our God reigns. He rolled the stone away from the mouth of that tomb, and he's rolling the stone away from hearts this morning because he reigns vic with victory and power and love. Amen? You can say amen. You can type amen. You can shout amen, whatever you want to do, because it's true. He rolled the stone away. Man, I know they came out with a, a song, a Motown song called Papa Was a Rolling Stone. Can I tell you, my papa been rolling stones way before that song came out, way before you could come up with any kind of stone, but wherever he laid his hat was his home. His home is in eternity. His home is in heaven. His home, he dwells in earthen vessels. So I'm telling you this morning that the stone in your life can be rolled away because my God reigns. Your Redeemer lives, and he lives and reigns forevermore. And you can shout hallelujah because our God reigns and he is king of kings and Lord of lords. Aren't you glad about that? I'm telling you what, he holds those keys, the keys that you need. And he's still, he's still the answer for the world today. So I want to tell you this morning, 
that that question is still going on in hearts and minds today. Who's going to roll that stone away? Well, if you haven't guessed it, I'm going to tell you again. His name is Jesus. His name, he is the Father. The Father rolled that stone away, and he raised Jesus from the dead. Death could not defeat him. The grave couldn't hold him. There's a song that goes out that says, ain't no grave going to hold my body down. I know that's bad English, but I want to tell you that there's no grave that can hold the King of kings and the Lord of lords down because he reigns supreme. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible um, in 2 Corinthians in 2 Corinthians, uh, or 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 7 and 8, it says this, But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know. They would, if they'd have known what was going on, if they would have known that before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain, they wouldn't have crucified him. If they would have known that while you were yet in your mother's womb, that he called you and he predestined you and he loved you and he blessed you and he seated you in heavenly places. If he didn't know, if they'd have known, they wouldn't have crucified him. But it had to be done so that the scriptures could be fulfilled. Our God reigns and he reigns forevermore. And those ladies were able to find out, and they ran, to the, ran out of that tomb, and they were no longer afraid because they realized that God had raised him from the dead. That is amazing news. That's amazing news. You need to hear that this morning. You need to hear that our, our God reigns forevermore. Some of you are facing some difficult problems even right now. You don't know how you're going get, to get out of it. Maybe you have a son or a daughter who's, who's wayward and, and just going off on their own, doing their own thing and need to, need to come home. Maybe, maybe there's, there's somebody or some, something going on in your finances. Maybe your marriage needs the stone to be rolled away. Maybe your finances need the stone to be rolled away. Or maybe you're facing this coronavirus and you still have fear in your heart and the stone of fear needs to be rolled away this morning. I'm telling you, the power of the resurrection can do that the power of God is able to do it because he said the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, hallelujah, lives in us and quickens our mortal body. The same spirit, not a different spirit, the same one that raised him from the dead. You know how much power it took to raise Jesus from the dead? Ah, there was power, wonder-working power that caused him to get out of that tomb. So if he rolled that stone away, he can roll the stone away from uh, the, the, your heart or whatever it is. Some of you may have a stone, <laughs> a heart of stone that you need him to, to, to breathe on and have come to life. And there may be some of you this morning who you don't even know what I'm talking about. You just happen to just tune in. You were scrolling by and by accident you clicked it and there's the, there's the big guy on the stage. Well, let me see what he's talking about. I'm talking to you. Maybe you need to hear this life-changing message of the gospel that changes us. The reason why we celebrate this day and I'm telling you what, you can come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. You, can, you were lost and now you're found because of what Jesus has done. That's why I know that, that God's power, the same power, that power lives in us and is able to, to, to bring us out of that darkness and into his light. We're talking about the king of kings and the rock, the, the, the chief cornerstone. Matter of fact, we're talking about removing stones. He is the chief cornerstone. He is a stone that the builders rejected. He is the one that you build your house upon when there's winds and the waves and the storms come crashing in on your situation and in on your life. He's the rock that I stand on. He is the rock that is higher than I. He is the one that we say, lead me to the rock that's higher than I. That's Jesus, the rock, which is Christ. And he is our chief cornerstone. And he rolls the stone away. He moves us and positions us to be what he's called us to be and do what he's called us to do. And so I'm, I'm excited about that. And we celebrate that. He's alive. And this is what I love also. The angel said, he said, hey, I know who it is that you're seeking. You're looking for Jesus of Nazareth. Well, he's not here. And I'm telling you what, I want to echo that angel this morning. And I want to say to you, I know who you're looking for. I know who it is that you seek. I know some of you have been looking for love in all the wrong places and you've been, been trying to figure it out. I know what you're looking for. It's not a what, it's a he. His name is Jesus. You're looking for him. But I'm telling you what, if you're looking for him, you can't find him in any tomb 
this morning. You won't be able to find him in any other tomb. Can I tell you what? All these other gods that people try to worship, all these other fallen gods that people are looking to, they're looking and trying to find out uh, who, who, who's the living God. There's only one. His name is Jesus, and he is the king. Aren't you glad about that? I'm telling you what, I get excited about that. I'm a, I get excited because I know that our God reigns, and, there's, and death couldn't, couldn't keep him in the, in the ground. And so I'm thankful for that. And so I want to pray with you this morning. So you were just, just where you are, I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you reign supreme and that you're amazing in every way. There's no God like you in all the earth. There's no one like you. We can, we can look high and search low and still can't find a God that compares to you. And I thank you, Lord, that even right now, Lord, as I'm praying with my brothers and sisters, I'm thankful, Lord, that we are celebrating who you are. And I thank you, Lord, for those that need to hear this life-changing message of the gospel, that you are alive and well. And so those of you that are, that are praying with me right now, and I'm going to invite you to, to pray. So you need to come to, out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So we need salvation this morning. You just, you don't know. You're lost, and you have no idea how in the world am I going to get out of this place that I'm in. You're, you're on the other side of the tomb. You, you're in a place of death, and you need to come into his light. I want you to pray with me this morning so that you can receive the light of Jesus. Lord, thank you, thank you. that you are God. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that God raised you from the dead. I believe that, Lord, with all of my heart. I believe that you can save me and bring me out of this darkness and into your light. So I'm thankful, Lord, for the power of the resurrection. I renounce sin and I cling to you. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Thank you, Lord, for forgiving me. Thank you, Lord, for causing me to come out of that darkness and stand in your victory. So I thank you, Lord, right now that I'm no longer a slave to sin, but I'm a child of God, a joint heir with Christ. And we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So I believe you prayed that prayer even right now that, that you are a believer, that you're, you're one of us. You can believe. So we can say you can celebrate the goodness and the amazing kindness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because he is, it's his kindness, the Bible says, that leads us to repentance. As Pastor Kevin said a little bit earlier, I hope that you have your, your communion elements. We're going to take communion together as a family. We're going to take communion. And I'm... I'm thankful that we get to share a meal together. And if you haven't, you haven't had a chance to get them, you can get them right now. Have communion with your family. I hope you're having communion on a daily basis. I'm hoping that you are, you are you're continuing to, to not just you know, skip or whatever, but you're having communion. Uh, you can do it individually. You can do it with your family. But I'm telling you, there's something about being able to have, uh, have communion and really uh, remember the price that Jesus paid. I'll tell you one of the things that's really happened since this, uh, this virus, we've been able to slow down as a family, and we've been having meals together. I'm telling you, um, Vanessa loves to cook. She's a great cook. Uh, I think I've gained uh, about 10 pounds since, uh, since this coronavirus, so I'm going to need prayer. But I'm telling you what, we've slowed down. We've had, uh, we've had every night... Uh, somebody has cooked. Last night, Luke cooked, and uh, I'm still alive. And so I'm, I'm, I'm like Jesus. I, I am alive. I'm still alive. So, um, but at the same time, I am so glad to be able to share this communion meal with you. So I'm going to share. I'm going to read this. Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. So this is, we're going we're gonna to grab this and take a hold of this bread. And he didn't say this represents, he said, this is my body that is broken 
for you. This body that was bruised and was beaten so that we can we could have life and have it more abundantly. So some of you that need, that need life and some of you need a healing in your body right now. Some of you uh, may be at a place where I'm, I, even right now, as I'm, as I'm talking, I hear, I hear the Lord saying this, some mental health, some depression, anything that's going on, just to let that fall off by the wayside. And so take this bread and I'm going to pray. Lord, we thank you for this bread that is your body or that is broken for you, for us, Lord, so that we can have life. Lord, you died on that cross, and, and Lord, and your body was beaten. There's a crown of thorns on your head, and, and so that you were bruised for our iniquities, and the chastisement of our peace was upon you, and by your stripes, by your stripes, we were healed. And if we were healed, Lord, we believe that we are healed. And I know there's some people right now that are, that are holding on to this bread for dear life <laughs> because it is life. And so we thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name, let's take and eat. And also we take the cup, which is his blood, the blood of Jesus that, was, that blotted out all of our sins, all of our transgressions. And that he, the Bible says that though our, our sin be red as crimson, he washed us white as snow. And though, they, though they, they're, they're, they're dark and our righteousness is filthy rags, but he washed us with his blood. And this is what I love about this, uh, his blood. He, he chooses not to remember. Then I heard Pastor Terry say this one time. It's not that he has amnesia. It's not that, he, that he, he absolutely just forgot about it, but he chooses not to remember what we've done. Hey, I love that that I, his mercies are new. His mercies are new every morning. I can stand in his mercies. So Lord, we thank you for your blood, your blood that was shed for us for the remission of sins, Lord, so that our sins will be taken away. You've taken our sins away and you've thrown them as far as the east is to the west, taking our transgressions from us, remembering them no more. And so Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you, Lord, for your, your amazing love, your steadfast love, that we stand in. We stand in victory and we bless you in Jesus' name. Let's take and drink. Amen. Amen. God is good and he is alive. And let me tell you, we take communion as a family and that it's not just, a, this is what I love about this. We talked about, we've talked about how he was raised from the dead and how that there was, there was so much unbelief and so much fear but we stand in a place of victory. So we don't just celebrate one day, just as Kevin said. We live in the resurrection power of our Lord every single day. So every day when you wake up, every day that you move, and so it's like, well, I don't have anything to do. You can celebrate his goodness. You can celebrate the fact that he is alive and he reigns forever every single day of your life. Every day we celebrate it. Well, I'm excited. I'm glad. I pray that you have a great Easter the rest of the day. I pray that as you that you laugh, I pray that you enjoy your family. Um, go on a walk on this beautiful day. Uh, pray with each other. I hope your kids were able to watch the, the kids uh, pro, um, uh, recording uh, t this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm excited about them seeing that. Uh, our, our children's team has done such a great job, so I hope they enjoy it. And we're so glad to be able to come into your home. And just remember, on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, We'll be uh, doing this. We'll be doing it again. Pastor Terry and I will be doing Advanced Foundation. So I hope you're ready for that. Thank you again for allowing us to come into your home. We love you. We do miss you. I'm telling you, um, I'm, it's not that I'm preaching to empty chairs, but a lot of empty chairs here. But your house is full of the glory of the living, risen King. Amen. So be blessed. Hey, be the church. I would say go out and be the church to the, to the unchurched, but you're already out. So just be the church. Thank you, and we'll see you again.